We are waiting to hear a lot more of the details about this attack from Optus and from the um, OAIC, our privacy regulator. At this stage, it looks like there's likely to have been thousands, uh, millions rather, of um, Optus customers, and including some past customers who've, whose details have been affected. And this can be their um, personal information, their name and their address, but also their identity documents. There are uh, government identity documents um, like licenses and passports. Um, so it's very concerning for those who've been affected and who may have heard from Optus already or be still waiting to hear from Optus that they have been affected. Um, for those who know they have been affected, they really should be looking for unusual activity on their accounts, including their Optus accounts and bank accounts. Um, they may uh, change their uh, password details as a, a matter of caution and consider switching to multi-factor authentication mm. where they can. Um, but also take into account that this breach already occurred some time ago and it's not just the activity going forward we're thinking about but whether there have been any unusual interactions recently up until now. Okay, and how are hackers likely to use the personal information that they've taken? How serious could this get? Uh, there's potential for identity fraud and identity theft for actually impersonating somebody else with such uh, close details. Um, also for scams, getting in touch with people, perhaps pretending to be Optus or pretending to be other, some other kind of service provider. Um, who knows those details about the person. Um, and in those cases, if it seems like a, some unusual contact or new contact from Optus, say, um, then it is possible for consumers to um, ask for the extension number of the person who's calling and to call Optus's advertised number rather than just giving any more details or um, having any more interaction over the phone. And Catherine, what sort of legal protection is there if people are scammed as a result of this hack? Um, here it's quite difficult because it's not just a matter of being able to say the information was hacked from Optus, therefore Optus is liable for this. Our focus in the law is to make sure that entities like Optus who have experienced a breach notify everybody about that so people can start to take steps to protect themselves. But that doesn't mean that Optus is therefore necessarily going to be responsible for any damage that people suffer. Um, we may find out that there has been some um, a contravention by Optus of its obligations under the Privacy Act. For example, its obligation to take reasonable steps to secure the information or um, obligations to reasonably um, uh, quickly de-identify or destroy data mm. when it is no longer necessary for the purpose for which it was collected. But we will have to wait to hear from the privacy regulator whether any of those kind of contraventions are discovered. And past customers were caught up in this going back to what, 2017. How long do companies usually keep personal uh, information on past customers on file? This depends on their legislative obligations. And so in some respects, there are uh, different obligations as to those retention periods, depending on the kind of customer um, that uh, Optus is uh, dealing with there. In some cases, it's as little as one year, but it depends on what Optus is claiming here was its obligation under specific laws um, for different customers. One thing that's really important for us to bear in mind is that there will always be data breaches and increasingly there are massive data breaches. And that can be the case whether or not the company has actually done something wrong. But that makes it far more important that we are restrained in our collection of personal data and also that companies take steps to destroy data when it's no longer required. And so the privacy regulator will have to be looking very closely here at whether Optus went beyond um, its 
obligations under the law to retain that data um, and uh, potentially didn't carry out its obligation to permanently de-identify or destroy that data once it was no longer needed. 